Hi there, Jamie from Time and Space here, and today I'm going to be quickly showing you some of the exciting things you can do within the arpeggiator in Gothic Instruments newest library, Dronar Live Strings. Some of you may already own this library, so hopefully this video will give you some inspiration on using the arpeggiator creatively. But if you aren't familiar with it, I definitely recommend taking a look at the walkthrough video, which is also on our channel, um, as well as this one, so you can see the full potential of Live Strings. So the arpeggiator is a really strong feature of Dronar, as it's simple to use, but there's so much you can do with it. So when I play a note in Dronar, it will automatically generate low, high, and effects layers at the same time. And what we're able to do then is assign different arpeggiator patterns to each layer, meaning you've got four different patterns being produced all from one note. So I'll demonstrate that now with some traditional string sounds. So you can see from the home page here, I was just bringing in the different layers one by one and then making use of the movement dial here. And this is a sort of general master control for the arpeggiator, uh, which makes it more and less intense. Um, if I switch back to the arpeggiator page, you can see what was going on in each layer. Um, so for that example, I was just using the pitch arpeggiator for each layer with the amount up at full. And this amount dial sort of controls how strong the arpeggiator on each layer is. One other feature that can be used with the pitch arpeggiator is the thick button on each layer in the expert page here. Um, what this does is it brings in an extra octave of notes um, to each layer, so that gives it more movement. Uh, let me just show you by bringing in the layers starting from the bottom. Next up we have the intensity arpeggiator. Again, this can be assigned to all layers to create separate patterns, but all this one does is control the dynamic velocity of the sound. You do that by drawing in patterns into this edit window here. So naturally you can achieve some interesting rhythmic ideas from that, such as this. On top of this, you can use it a lot more creatively. For example, if I set the arpeggiator rate to high and then turn up this smooth dial here, which adds a nice fade between notes, then I'll draw in a pattern and play some high notes and it will create a tremolo type effect. Or you could choose to go down the other route and create a slow pulsing wave by using a low rate and a high smooth setting. And this can sound really great when playing in lower octaves like this. Finally, we have the filter arpeggiator, which again works like the intensity one in the way that you can draw in patterns in the edit window here. Uh, but instead now you're changing the cutoff frequency. So it'll sound a little something like this. But that was just for one layer. So if I now go and draw in patterns on all four layers and then slowly bring them in from the main page, you'll hear quite a chaotic sound with lots of movement. Now what's so great about Dronar is that if you make a drone that you like, you can save and load it up at any time and then assign it to a key. 
Uh, so each of these 12 red keys down here represent a different drone. And you simply press the key to switch over. So this means you can have 12 different arpeggiator patterns and easily move through them. So you've heard all the separate arpeggiators now, so I'll just spend a minute using them all together so you can hear the full effect. So hopefully this has given you more of an idea of how much you can get out of this powerful arpeggiator inside of Dronar, but of course there's only a fraction of what the library can do, and there's plenty more to explore. Dronar is currently available to download from Time and Space exclusively, and you can find the link in the description if you need to find out more info. Thanks for watching. Thank you.